Do you want to check? I think we are. Are we live now? Yeah, we are live now. Cool. All right. I share on my Facebook, write a post. Post. Awesome. If you want to post to your um if you wanna if you wanna post to your uh, Facebook, that's the time. Got Hi Danny. That's your mate. Peter. Hi Danny. Yay. All right, so let's get started. Um Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, guys. Um, who, whoever you are, wherever you are. Um, today we are going to have a chat with the animal whisperer, <laughs> Peter Sharp. Um, if, like, I always ask myself, if I don't be a wedding or portrait photographer, you know, what would I like to be? I would. I want to be Peter Sharp. You know, you have so much fun with chatting with all those animals, and um, you know play with and it's just like zookeeper but in a photographer version it's so it's so cool who's that little friend climbing on your back uh that's that's my um my my pet bird gary if he he's hiding he's being shy um he's yeah. uh he's a rescue scaly breasted lorikeet he'll come out um, yeah he, I'm sure hangs, he hangs it he hangs out in the studio with me cool so uh just get you guys um to talk about uh, who Peter is, so Peter is a you know multiple international uh, multiple awards internet uh, multiple international awards photographers with more than one hundred twenty um, awards, and he's also published a book right with Lost and Found um, with Rescue Dog with a beautiful story there. Later on, we're going to show you the because we used the um, we used the book for the for the light testing so. That's cool. Yeah, we did. That's cool. We did. Yeah. We'll, we'll and uh, light, yeah. And what else? Um, okay. Do you want to talk about your commercial work, Peter? Like. Yeah. Look. Um, I, I know you work for uh, Amazon I, as well as Virgin Velocity, I've, right? What kind yeah, of job? I've worked, I've worked with. I worked with a couple of different brands. So the majority, uh, well, all my work is is animal based. So I only work with animals now. Um, yep. I have a background in portrait. Uh, event music photography and and now it's all just animals and uh, my work includes uh, people's pets so I capture photos of people's pets and create artwork uh, and I also um, do some commercial advertising work where um, I'm capturing photos that are used for a variety of different purposes and yes there is you're right um, some of those brands aren't always uh, pet uh, brands so uh, your recent recent clients have included Amazon and Virgin, and um, and then there's the the pet brands. I've got a job in the next couple of weeks, uh, capturing uh, images for some pet food packaging. So it varies, and I and that's what I love about it is that um, my job is um, uh, it's never boring. Um, yeah. So yeah, surely. <laughs> let's look at the behind the scenes, shall we? Yes. Um, yes. Let's. Yesterday when I was uh, look at this, what what is that? That's a uh, black flying fox, um, a yeah. fruit bat, and uh, worked worked with him. I do a lot of voluntary work. Uh, philanthropy is really an important part of of who I am and what my business is. So um, I volunteer for Sydney Wildlife Rescue, and this little guy was actually found um, as a baby uh, on the ground in Centennial Park in Sydney, and uh, I. Took some portraits of him um, to. We use the 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 work that I do for Sydney Wildlife Rescue. The purpose is always to educate people. Um, the side benefit out of what I do for them is is that I, I quite often can capture some great fine art type portraits of these animals. Uh, doesn't always like work that. out that way. Just like that. Yep. That's correct. Um, and uh, well, yeah, we're also using them mainly to educate people. Uh, about the great work that 
that Sydney Wildlife Rescue do. Um, but we, I'm always looking to capture their personality and we're always having a lot of fun when we're doing it. We're making sure the animals are never are never stressed. It's certainly um, a bat with a, a lot of personality. How, do you, how did you get... Is that, is that bat smiling or...? It's eating a grape. So oh. um, to me, to me, it looked like it was smiling and it was having an yeah. amazing time uh, eating fruit as I fed it. Um, the cool thing about working with bats is I, I just think they're really misunderstood. They're actually uh, uh, bats or flying foxes is what these guys are. They're, they're just like puppies with wings. Um, and as you saw from that, from that photo that Ari showed before with the behind the scenes, um, yeah. Both of those bats, I had two at the same time. So this is, um, that's uh, Nikita, uh, and Nikita's yeah. a black flying fox. And the one that you just showed a minute ago, that's Calypso, a grey-headed flying fox. And um, they both came in at the same time. So they were both in care with Sydney Wildlife Rescue. Um, this, uh, this bat here, Calypso, was actually um, in uh, Kangaroo Valley, which is in uh, just out of Sydney. And it was um, a victim, um, well, it was abandoned by its mother as part of an abandonment event uh, caused by the bushfires, that, the horrific bushfires that we had in Australia uh, at the end of last year. And they were both in care together. Um, bats are very communal animals, so it does, it does require, they do require a lot of um, uh, affection, um, which is unusual. It was quite unusual working working with an animal where it's encouraged to um, to, to to really engage with them. Uh, so both of them were more interested in hanging off me and engaging with me than they were in um, in having their photo taken. So it was quite it was quite cute. It was a really cool experience, and yeah. I'm really privileged that. And we'll, we'll I think we'll talk through some more photos of some really yeah. cool experiences. I have working with a variety of different, or oh, there's another one there. So that's a funny story. Um, yep. I took, this is, uh, this is Ben, the wombat. And uh, he came in uh, during, during COVID. Um, and I believe he's just been released um, into the wild, which is great news. So he came in uh, from recollection. Uh, he's, he's, he was found on the side of the road by his uh, mother who'd been a victim of a car in Sydney. And um, right here, he was so comfortable in my arms that uh, he farted. And he farted <laughs> so loud that not only could I smell it, yeah. but I felt it as well as Oh, God. Um, and, yeah, just one of those really, uh, really special moments that I get to share with the animals. Um, this is a different wombat. Uh, but yeah very similar in terms of the level of engagement I'm able to capture um, by being really patient with my subjects. Mm. Beautiful. Uh, this is, um, this cool. is a pet snake. So uh, yeah. I get to work with all kinds of animals. Um, yeah. I'm actually afraid of snakes uh, and it's taken really? me quite a while. Yeah. It's taken me a while to get used to working with them. Um, mm. I grew up in the bush and my parents raised me or uh, as a kid, I just always felt afraid of snakes. I was trained to be scared of them. And uh, it took me quite a while to, to, to break down that fear and be comfortable working with um, all kinds of snakes. And I've had the privilege of working with venomous snakes, um, which, is, which is, yeah, a really, this is a venomous snake. This is a, a death adder. Um, and I found that the majority of snakes that I have in the studio are actually super comfortable in the space. Um, and just because by being nice really and calm or... and patient. Yeah. We, do, we do normally heat it up, yeah. Uh, it depends on the snake. Um, if it's warm, they tend to be more active. If it's cooler, they tend to be less active. So it depends on the snake as to how warm I want the studio yeah. to be. Um, hmm. In this case, it wasn't too warm. Um, but this, this, yeah, this was a really special moment. Uh, How did you get a, get a snake, a to, stick snake. His, to stick his tongue out? That's quite fascinating. Patience and wait and wait for it to happen. Oh. Um, if they're if they're comfortable, um, they don't feel threatened. 
uh, I'm able I'm able to go, get all sorts of different types of images. I just you never I never know what I'm going to get until it happens in front of me. If that makes sense, Aries. Cool. Um, guys, so there's no magic words. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no, yeah, there's no, there's no yeah. magic, there's no magic button. I think, yeah. I think, I think the key to it is patience and love, um, right? Because I, I was there, see yeah. how you interact with Bowie, all the patience and love, how you're treating uh, with lots of cuddles. Um, so we're going to share. We, we have lots of nice, fun BTS. Um, that's what are we going to share with you guys today? So hopefully. You guys would enjoy. It's um, <laughs> it's a mere oh, cat or oh, that's ferrets. Two two yeah. pet ferrets. That's so cute. There, Gary. Is that the? There we go. There's Gary. Ah, oh, that's me on TV. Yes. So that's that's uh, that's me on me on TV when I was talking about the book Lost but Found. Yep. Um, yep. Speak of that. As, as you can see, as you can see, yep. I belong behind the camera, not in front of it. Mm -hmm. Speak of the book. Shall we have a look at the yes. book? Yep. Yeah. Right. Let's have a look at the book. Just give me a sec. All right. So guys, today we are going to share with you um, Peter's um, one of Peter's signature lighting style. We call that five um, five light lighting master. Um, <laughs> so it's been done by five lights, and uh, Peter's yes. going to share with you step by step, right? Um, as so usual, this... um, I think Peter will. Um, you know, we always try to we we use the book to test the light rather than you know, waste our, you know, customers' times, you know, on the spot trying to figure out each light. So that's basically what we were trying to do. Because Peter has the lights um, pretty much all set up. So um, let's start with from this one. And uh, yeah, sure. so this is um, this is a key light. And um, yeah. we, we put an AD600 uh, using an AD600 here with a beauty dish on top. Um, yeah. And this particular light is all about um, capturing or getting a cat to light in the animal's eyes when I can when I can get them in the sweet spot. Um, yep. But as you'll see, if you go to the next slide or the next image, Aries, that's here. This is the backlight. So this is the key light and the backlight, and they're yep. both AD six hundreds. Yep. And the next one, Aries. Uh, so now I've added two side lights. Um, yeah, and they're two AD four hundreds. Yeah. So if you if we look into the dog's eyes, we can we can see that, right? Yeah. And then there's one final light, which is uh, which is another AD six hundred, and that's a room fill light. So in many ways, that actually becomes my key light because you mm. can see that's actually where I'm getting the majority of the light from. Um, yeah. and you'll see when I'm, when we look at the behind the scenes, you'll see, you'll see why I work like that. Um, okay. and it's, and it's because I'm, I'm, I'm not forcing an animal to, to be in a particular position all the time. Yeah. Um, the way I work is very much about letting, letting the pet, letting the animal be itself. And that's how I'm able to, to capture their personalities. So, um, I've I've got a, a a pretty small studio space um, intentionally. It was built intentionally that way, and um, by having my lighting set up this way, I'm able to make sure that um, I can capture great images no matter where the animal is in that space. Mm. Um, and I and I find that I'm adjusting settings on the camera, um, generally just the aperture. Uh, I shoot everything in manual. So I'm generally just adjusting the aperture. I'm not really ad adjusting uh, uh, flash settings while I'm working. Um, over time, I've just developed um, or worked out what those settings are that, that suit me. Um, and I'm only ever adjusting them before I start taking photos based upon the, the color of the animal. So um, yeah, that's, that's the lighting setup, Aries. 
All right, let's um let's have a look at the image we've done on that day, shall we? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um So I think this is the video of the lighting setup, isn't it? My my studio yes. space. Oh no, yep, there you go. So that's the yeah. first image. All right. So let's. So, that's, so this is this is the beautiful Bowie, and Bowie yeah. is a um, uh, a toy jar. Um, he's a stunning cat. Uh, I would describe you'll you'll see you'll see his incredible personality. Um, I would yeah. describe Bowie as a bit of a dog cat. Um, has very much the personality of a dog as well as a cat. Um, yeah. He's very smart. He's been trained to sit. Um, he's he's just such a beautiful animal, and he's got so much personality. Yeah. Um, other day, because you know we were trying to play with Bowie, because he actually he actually can do sit right. That's quite yes. amazing for yes. a cat. He can. It is quite amazing. It's not. It's not common for a cat to be able to sit, no, um, not at or all. to sit on command. And this is this is when we started. And here's Bowie, um, just exploring the space. And as you can see, he's quite he's quite keen to to get up and have a look. So, um, what I found with Bowie, I have met Bowie before, um, and what we found with Bowie when we were working with him was that. He was actually quite nervous to start with, which wasn't which wasn't something I was expecting. Um, and you'll mm -hmm. notice that he's um, he's not as confident as I was expecting him to be. Uh, so this is me catching capturing that image that we just saw before. And at the very beginning, when I'm taking photos, I'm generally not trying to capture a specific image. I'm more getting uh, my subject used to the camera, the light, the studio space. Um, you'll see here that that I'm using um, a toy of some description. I find every animal's different, and uh, I'm not always. Um, you'll see here, Bowie's hiding in the corner. So um, what I do is, um, you know, read that animal's behaviour. In this case. Um, Bowie was always always quite engaged with me, so um, we have a cuddle. Um, I try and feed him if he's motivated by Bowie. Bowie isn't as motivated by food as what most animals are. Um, yep. But you'll see, he starts to get he starts to get quite inquisitive. Um, he's quite he's quite intrigued by the light and where the flash is coming from. Um, and this is this is when I capture that that image that we just looked at when he's just walking across um oh yeah so we have a question here uh peter yes by jim he's asking Hi, jim. to light the back yeah. of infinity cove so it needs any bells and whistles just quick recycling times well yeah look the i use the ad 600 um jim yeah. And uh, it worked perfectly. Um, yeah. uh, had a really quick recycle time. Um, uh, the color consistent. I cannot fault the color consistency at all. Um, while working with Bowie, uh, I probably captured about four hundred photos, and yeah. um, I think in those four hundred, there was one um, where the color was off. Uh, so the consistency was just spot on. Um, and recycle time was was super fast. So in that, to answer your question, I'd recommend the AD six hundred. Yeah. yeah. So here's the answer, Jim. All right. Let's um, let's have a look at the second image, shall we? All right. Which one was that? Oh, I think this is one of my favourite images. That one. Sorry, it takes a bit of time. That's it. Yeah, this is yeah. one of my favourite images. Yeah, so let's yeah. have a look at the video of me capturing that. Yeah, let's um let's so that's previous image of Bowie walking and this is a second image. Let's look into the video, shall we? <laughs> I 
So here, uh, what I do when I'm working Aries is I'll, you would have noticed that um, mm. I'm constantly changing uh, the toys that I'm using, <laughs> particularly with a particularly with a cat like Bowie. Um, yeah. I have to make sure that I've constantly got them engaged um, and, and they're not getting bored. Um, yeah. Sometimes getting bored can be a good thing uh, in that they'll just kind of flop and sit there and do nothing. But in the case of Bowie, um, mm. definitely needed to constantly change. And you'll see that's when I capture that image. Um, when he's kind of, for me, it feels like he's, he's either high-fiving me or, um, or trying to pat me. Uh, there's, there's a level of engagement in that photo that I, that I personally love. In this case, you can see he's engaging with the toy and the feathers. Yeah, so here's a question from our friend, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Yeah. yeah. Does, do animals, animals get spooked, uh, spooked by, by the, the flashes? flashes often? Yeah, they can do. Um, yep. I'm always, um, I always take things slowly. So what you've seen here in the behind the scenes is that I've, I've jumped in. It looks like I've jumped in quite quickly. Um, however, that's not the case. So um, uh, I will I will test I will test the with each of my subjects first, just to work out whether they are um, they are feeling nervous with with the flash. Sometimes it's not the flash, Andrew. Sometimes it's the camera. Um, you know, having that 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 big black box shoved in front of my face uh, and then not being able to see me um, can can unsettle them. Can be annoying, uh, yeah. and it's yeah, it can it can unsettle them. They can get a bit spooked by that. Um, but I find that by being really patient and finding, whenever I've got a subject that's that's um, spooked or nervous, um, I will just go slowly uh, and introduce various things. Um, sometimes it's just that they're they're a bit spooked by the surface that they're walking on in the studio or it could be the studio space itself um and it's just by being super patient taking my time um in this particular uh, scenario andrew uh, bowie was um a little nervous to start with and it did take a little while for him to just build up that up oh, the flash isn't a problem i'm actually having fun here and uh, then he started to get engaged um, as you saw, he, he jumped up and, and, and wanted to have a look at what the light was. Um, so that's always a good sign. So I hope that's answered your question. Yeah. So I will answer, the, I will take over from this one. Hey, Jim, uh, um, you don't, if you don't need um, the TTL functionality, uh, you can go for the, there's an 8600, rather than Pro, there's 8600 BM. So that's a menu awning um, flash. Um, that's a couple of couple of hundred dollars off from eight, um, you know, down from eighty six hundred pro. So that might be an alternative option for you if you don't need those TTL as you said. All right. So yeah, I I, I, I agree with you, Aries. Yeah. It, it's like I don't I don't need TTL. Um, yeah. I I hear what you're saying, Jim. Um, it does it does seem like overkill, but you'll see that. You know, in this particular case, I'm I'm looking for a pure white background, and yeah. um, I'm looking to capture everything um, in camera as much as possible. So I'm not I'm not trying. I don't really want to be editing um, uh, out the background in my photos, or um, you know, when I'm working with gels, I do want quite a strong color. So having a powerful flash for me is important for my background. Um, that's, that's how I work, but I do understand your point. Uh, side profile photo. I always, I always, I just, I just love the feeling that I get looking at this. Uh, for me, I don't always have to have my subject looking at me. Um, I'm always looking to capture those photos, but, um, when I'm working with, with um well, just like any photographer does i'm i'm always looking to capture a variety of poses and um looking to capture different feelings um of that animal but i just in this one i just love bowie's coat um 
and that feeling that I get looking at this. Yeah. Cool. Jim, that's looks like a tiger. That's Godox AD six hundred BM. Not eighty six not eighty six hundred pro. All right. So let's look at the B, let's look You've at got, the BTS. Got a shall behind we? the scenes for that one, don't yep. you? Yeah, I do. I do. I of course. This one, right? It's a... <laughs> yeah, as <laughs> you can see. To answer Andrew's question before, you can see this was this was in the beginning too, um, and it took a little while to get to get Bowie away from him. He was enjoying playing with my power cords and charges in the corner, and it took a little while to get him out. Um, and you can see I've changed to a different toy. Um, got a few of them here. Um, can't remember what I was using there. Probably one of these, but you can see that's it. That he's um continuing to engage with me <laughs> yeah there you go how he's having another swipe at it again <laughs> he's pretty cute yeah and yeah that's that's always one of the photos i'm looking to get He said, "Give me that." <laughs> yeah, and then he's and then he's like, "I want to play with something different." Yeah, there we go. That's when I get it. That's it, right there. I kind of noticed you. You didn't do burst shooting at all the time, right? How would you no. decide um, what is the right moment? Ooh, it's instinct, I think. Um, it's just from doing what I do all day, every day. Um, no, I try not to burst too much. I try not to take too many frames. Um, I have an idea in my mind as I'm seeing what's happening in front of me as to what type of photo I'd like to get. Um, and if I don't get it, uh, I'll try and reenact that again or I'll come back to it later. Um, yeah. It's it's very much about making, in this case, it was just getting Bowie comfortable. And you'll see that as we go on, I get some some funny photos where he's behaving more like a dog than a cat um, that really just showcases that dog cat personality. Yeah. All right. So we have some question coming. Um, yeah. So Jim's like, he reckon we need to, <laughs> he spent more time chasing in the studio Casey. and he's like, <laughs> We need to build a wall around in a high one. What's <laughs> yes. your recommendation? <laughs> yes, in, and enclosed space. Um, yeah, that's that's what my studio is. It's a small enclosed space, um, and so yeah, I find that my and that that animals are much more comfortable um, when they can they can see where they are, uh, and and you know they can find particularly cats. I have mm. to say. So another question from Zoe, she said, you know, you need a toy assistant. Do you? Yeah, look, you will see that um, I involve my clients in the shoot and you'll see yeah. in some, some more behind the scenes uh, footage that, um, uh, that Bowie's mum and dad get involved as well. But I find that uh, I prefer to, to manage it myself. Um, because for me, it's about the engagement with me. Um, and that's, that's what I enjoy doing. I'm able to, to hold, hold the camera in one hand and, and the toy in the other. And, um, you know, here we go. There we go. You've got, you've got, uh, so that's Max, uh, Bowie's dad. Um, and he gets involved assisting me as well. Um, so it's not just, it's not just about me. Uh, but I'm always trying to 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 get them looking looking at me, or I'm trying to control. Um, so by having them engage with me, that's how I'm able to to capture that. Um, I can't remember which which image goes with this, but I, from recollection, I think here what I'm trying to do, I'm throwing a little ball back up in the studio, and I'm trying to capture here a, a pose where Bowie's walking at me, um, and. 
yeah, that that particular shot there. I'm trying to get, to get something where he's. It's almost like a. It's almost like a dance, um, a dance move. Um, Aries will bring up the photo now. Yeah, that's it. And I'm um, showca- trying to showcase the personality, the beautiful coat that he has, um, and just yeah, there's just something about that that. Um, that look and that feeling that I get from this, uh, mm. and so yeah, managing the toys that's that's generally something that I will do. But I will get I will get the owners involved as well, um, so it's a joint joint effort. Just wondering, do you have a like shoot list, like things you because you know when you play around with the CAD, you sort of know, like when I do um. Model shoots, I sort of know what's her forte, right? There's a shoot list. I yeah. want to do her close up, half body, you know, things like those. Do you know? Do you, is there a particular movement or is there a particular expression you think you might get out of the cat? Do you have that kind of instinct? Like, inst- uh, I do, yeah, I do. It, it, it's a shot list that I'll build as I go, um, and, I, and it's it's something that I'll start to build as I've. Um, Sat down with the cat. So before I t- start taking photos, I've I've spent a bit of time with my subject and with their owners, and I've got an understanding around their personalities and and what they what they mean to their owners. Um, we're obviously talking here about a, um, a domestic pet session. Um, it's no different to doing a commercial job where you've got a very specific brief uh, as to what what I need to capture. Uh, for that brand to deliver an outcome, so I guess the outcome here is for 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 the owners of their pets to capture to capture their pet's personality and what they love about them. So I've already got in my mind um, what their personality is, and then I'm looking to capture photos that give me that feeling. Um, and then I'll have a I'll have this shot list in my head that I'm looking to build on. Here's another question we got from our users. Hi, Shani. Uh, I guess it's different for each animal. How long do the animals usually stay engaged and interested in the shoot? It's a, it is it, it, will, it is different for each animal. Uh, in terms of how long they stay engaged and interested, that varies. Um, it, can, it can be 15, 20 minutes. It can be longer. Uh, Bowie was engaged the whole time. Um, aside from the, the the start, where he was um, a little bit apprehensive and took a little while to get used to the lights, uh, and to me sticking a camera in his face, he was engaged the whole time. And I would say that that's because I've kept him engaged, uh, and I involved at any point in time where I felt like he was becoming a bit disconnected. We changed things up. We did something different. Um, but it's very, it's every, every animal is different. Every pet is different. So it's just being able to understand and read their behavior. Um, and I'm always doing different things to make them feel comfortable. Hope cool. that answers the question. Yeah. Fascinating. What's next, Aries? All right, uh, can't wait. I know what's next. Wait, this uh, that's this one, right? I think it's this one. Yeah. So yeah. should we should we show them the finished photo first? Yeah, right. show the finished photo. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So <laughs> Bowie <laughs> Bowie loves the tummy rub. So what I got Max to do here was to give and and both Max and I are giving Bowie a tummy rub. Uh, and if you play the video now, you'll see. Okay. And this is an example of only, in this case, it's only having a split second. Um, so Bowie was comfortable having a tummy rub and lying on his back. And then I had a split <laughs> second. I took a couple of frames there. I quite like the outtakes so um 
I think this was the only time I, or one of the, a couple of the only times I adjusted the lights in the studio. Um, so I will adjust some of the lights occasionally if I can see, I've looked in the back of the camera, I can see a photo I want and you'll see um, here I'm about to capture the next image and it's similar but different. Um, and when you asked me to pick 10 images, yep. Aries, I picked, I picked these two because I wanted to They're show They're my favorite, that. to be honest. Oh, are they? Um, you'll yeah. see here I've got Bowie's attention and, and I've used food to do that. Um, and that's when I capture that other image. The next image you'll show as well. Um, you can see that Bowie's quite comfortable now. Um, you yeah. know, he's cleaning himself, he's engaging in the food, um, he's looking at me. And that's why I'm in control of the, the, the toys and the and the treats as much as possible. Um, and if you go to the next image areas, you'll see that. Just wondering. Um, all between like, those two. Peter, I never had a cat. I, ha I, ha I have a dog, right? Um, yeah. How can you tell if a boy is in her comfortable zone or not? Um, with Bowie, I can tell from, so there's, yeah, let's, there's that second image. You can see it's very different to the first one where Bowie's more engaged with me. Um, and that's when I was, I was feeding, feeding him. Um, how can I tell? It's, it's, it's understanding their behavior and, uh, reading, reading their eyes, their ears, their paws, their, their tail um and just it's like it's like when i spoke before about being really nervous of snakes one of the things that i did to to well it wasn't just nervous i was afraid of snakes um the thought of working with a snake would just yeah induce anxiety so i spent a long time uh before i had a snake come into the studio i spent a lot of time uh, watching YouTube videos and understanding their behavior and how they move um, across a range of different um, varieties of snakes. And uh, by understanding what, how, they, how they will move and what they will do, and uh, I've just found I made myself more comfortable. Um, I still every now and then get that, that sense of, and I think sometimes it's a healthy fear. Um, I had an Eastern brown snake in, uh around christmas time and i think there was a moment where it it, it got very close and um I think that that sense of fear kicked in um but for the most part i don't feel it at all anymore because i because i can read their behavior uh i'm working with people i trust and um it's the same with any animal it's just um when i'm working with wildlife it's talking to the carers who, who know their personalities and relying on them to make sure, to work with me to make sure that those animals are comfortable. Um, because if they're ever not, uh, we, we stop taking photos. Mm -hmm. It's always about the animal's well-being. I agree. I mean, if they're uncomfortable, you wouldn't get those fun photos anyway, right? No, no, and the, yeah. you're right. You're right, Aries. When you know, if I'm, if, and that's why I always get the best photos once that animal's settled in near the end. Um, and that's and that's definitely what happened here with Bowie. Um, yeah. We actually Bowie was nervous, so we stopped. Um, I did get a couple of photos in that time, um, but then we stopped. We uh, we essentially reset things for him and um took him out of the studio space gave him a cuddle let him play let him wander around and then uh move back in there again hi oh, just another question jake's channel yep. yeah that's actually a really good question um i work with um a 24 to 70 mil lens so because of my space is quite small um i find i'm able to get everything i need from close-ups to uh full body photos with that particular lens so that's the lens i use 99.9 percent .9 of the time cool so that 
That was quick, nice and easy. Oh my god, it's crispy, sharp. Look at the details. Yeah, it's those yeah. it's those wonderful Godox lights, Aries. No, like what sort of um, aperture are you using? Are you using uh, high speed sync from, or you don't? No, I don't use high high speed sync. Um, I know a lot of pet photographers do use high speed sync uh, yeah. because I'm not um, because I'm not bursting. Um, I'm just looking to time my photos. Um, I will take a couple of photos in quick succession, but my burst is generally two shots. Um, mm. And uh, the aperture is, is anywhere between, uh, it depends, but anywhere between F11 through to 16, 18. Sometimes I will get up to 20. Depends what I'm trying to get. Um, I'm, I'm normally trying to get as much in focus as possible, so um, I will shoot at quite a low aperture. Cool. Should we do the next one? The Let's next the one? one yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. I don't know which one this is. Wait, that's... Sorry, pardon me. Let me just... Six. That's this, right? That's that, yeah. That's seven. I found it. I found it really hard to choose. I, I captured lots of photos of Bowie jumping, um, uh, jumping after the feathers and the toys and the balls, and I found it really hard to pick between those areas. You only let me pick ten. Um, I captured so many that I would probably normally create a series out of them. Um, yeah. Uh, this one I love just because of the expression. If you're able to zoom in, you'll see this. You'll see this expression on Bowie's face that is just priceless. Um, yeah, that's it, and it just makes me laugh. Yeah, it's, when I it's, see it. that's it's funny, and I know, I know that, um, I know that his owners will laugh at that too. Um, yeah, it pretty much sums up sums up who he is. He's crazy in a good way. It's quite some personality thing isn't it <laughs> lots of personality yeah i mean what i what, i chose that photo because uh, i think this is the video of me capturing that um but you've already seen you would have already seen in the videos and there you know i've used max here to to help me capture this photo um and you know, once again we've changed up the toys again and you'll see that that bow is really engaging in that um uh Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll have something as well. I'll make stupid noises and I'll be looking to get Bowie looking at me while he's doing that, as he just did then. Um, and I can capture a variety of different photos quite quickly by doing this. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's very much Bowie's personality. I just can't help to watch it again. <laughs> he it's almost like, looks that? uncoordinated. He almost looks uncoordinated sometimes. Yeah. What you can't what you can't hear here is all of us laughing. Um it was it was a lot of fun. We're obviously laughing with Bowie, not at him. Here's a comment from uh, our friend Jazzy. It's like, yeah, thanks, Jazzy. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. When um, when Aries uh, spoke to me about doing this, um, I I immediately knew I wanted to work with a cat um, because most most pet animal photographers um, focus on dogs, um, whereas uh, I work with all kinds of animals. As you can see, I've got Gary crawling all over me. Um, yeah, I work with all kinds of animals, uh, and I and I love the challenge of working with cats. All right, what's Shall next, we? Aries? Let's have a look, shall we? Let's... What's this one? Uh, I like this one. Sorry, it's uh, my uh, my my it's laptop. Like... It's a bit jagging. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I love this one. It's. That's that's Bowie. So much fun! It's right. almost like a, I think it's uh, almost sitting a Japanese 
you know, <laughs> bowing position, don't you think so? Oh, he looks like a tiger. I think he's like, yeah. for me, he's like ch channeling. And you'll see another photo we've got coming up where he does the next one, actually. He channels his Tiger King pose. Oh, this yeah. One. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's stereotype. Yeah. I think, I think, I think that's my favorite. Um, because it is a very, oh, look, if I was, if I was ever to describe, if someone was to ask me what a boudoir photo of a pet was to look like, I think <laughs> that would be it. Let's, um, what number? That's number nine. Let's have a look. Did we just play eight? No, I don't we think haven't you done that eight yet. Yeah, yeah I don't think play you played eight. eight. Play eight. I can't remember what's in eight. Yeah. Once again, he, he you'll see me. I've changed another toy again. Um, oh, that's right. Bowie had jumped off. And you'll see. Yeah, I just get Gary. Um, get Gary. Yeah, that's Gary. That's Bowie. I get Bowie um, to move back in to the studio space. And as you can see, I've got I've got Bowie in the very far edge of the studio, so he's nowhere near yeah. my key light. He's actually out of he's actually out of um, out of sight of the right side light. But I'm still able to capture well lit photos of him. Here we go. I think here he is. So I've attracted his attention. You can't see it there. I'm throwing a ping pong ball around. Um, and that's engaging him. Come on. Let me get rid of my birds being annoying. <laughs> Yeah, that was how I was able to capture that one. Let's, let's look at the next one, shall we? There's another one. Yes. Oh, I think this nine. is my favorite. Yeah. The seductive Tiger King pose. Can't remember what I was laughing at. I was laughing at something. How do, how do you get a cat to do that? Like, you're just asking to stay or? Look, in this case, Bowie does stay. Um, you can yeah. ask him to sit and you can ask him to say, but that's not normal for cats. So <laughs> here we go. Max has put him down. He's just decided just to flop. Um, and here he is. And that's just before was when I captured this particular photo. And he's yeah. just giving me a very, uh, I think Bowie's parents referred to it as his seductive look. Let's look at this, shall we? Yeah, so the, 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 the parents of the animals or the carers of the animals, they're always the ones that give me the insight into their personalities. Um, and this is, a, look, this is captured using the equivalent of, of peanut butter for cats. I call it kitty crack. Um, and there's a behind-the-scenes image of this. Um, once again, this was a hard one to capture, a uh, hard one to choose between because it was an easy one to capture. But a hard one to choose between areas because they had so many great photos of Bowie um, pulling all sorts of funny faces. Uh, and they make for a great series. Uh, but this was definitely my favourite. Um, yeah. I, I love this one myself. It's a nice headshot. And you can see the catch lights, right, guys? Yeah, that's Two so I've got Bowie. I've got I've got the the key lights there. Um, I've got I've got Bowie. So that is the two key lights. That's the the room light you're seeing in these reflection in his eyes, and it's also the um, the beauty dish that I've got above me. So um, uh, I've got Bowie sitting sitting in that sweet spot, and um, he's he's eating. He's enjoying the food and pulling funny faces. So much for dogs, fun. it's peanut butter, and for for cats, and I think you've got a, a good behind the scenes video of this. You mean this one? I think this is it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see there he's 
he's quite comfy he's engaging with me i've got the I've got the food um he's not and bowie's not food motivated so um he was more he's more motivated by attention than anything else he's like, give me that yeah when we're having cuddles at the end uh he, yeah you can get rid of that photo of me um yeah he's uh he, he's constantly constantly engaging with me um uh, which is which is how i'm able to capture a, a series like that should we show a uh, quickly show um review the studio setup let's just have a quick yes. look yep. about where the light is so on the yep. top that's the so that one that's right in front there is yep. is an ad 600 uh yep. and that's the that's the room light um mm. and that's that's quite high up behind me just filling the room with light um and then you can see just down in the bottom in the middle there's an ad 400 and that's the side one of the side lights and then yep. um there's an ad 600 right in front with the um beauty dish on top and then up in the top you can see on another auto pole is the is the back is the light for the background and what you can't see on the left hand side uh is this a video aries or is this just yeah. A, oh yeah there we go it is a video well, there's, so, yeah. so there's that so i'm using a couple of different auto poles um i find that that that's what works for me there's multiple different different accessories you can use to mount your lights but um i find it's just really flexible for me um you know this is a this is a particular lighting setup that i've used uh for for this but there's different setups that that i that i will use and i'm able to easily move my lights around um by setting them up on auto pulse with um with manfrotto arms crispy sharp yeah and it's interesting because i i'm i'm fascinated with with the catch lights now i under you know look at your light setup i understand because the beauty dish is there for the catch lights right it's beautiful yes. catch lights in her eyes yes but even though she, she walks off to the edges um you still have yep. another key lights that's Almost right. Like it was a standard reflector, right? In, similar to this case. Yes. And I can, you will, or look, I can, because it's on an arm and it's above me, I can, I can move, move them around, around quite, if you want quite to. easily. Um, yep. And I will do that. Um, but in this case, I didn't, I didn't need to. Um, I prefer to, I find that once I've got the lights working and I've got the camera working, I know, um, I know what to i just know what to do and i just adjust i generally just adjust the aperture um according to where the animal is in the space and i just you get a feel for you get a feel for your your lights your camera your settings um as to as to what as to what you need to change them to based upon where they are but i don't i don't find i don't really need to change much at all once once i know um, what the color is of my subject, what the, the color of the, the background I'm working with is. Um, yes, I'll always get the best photos in that sweet spot, but with all of these photos areas, I didn't, um, um, because I'm using, because I'm using that, that high powered flash as my background, um, I'm, I'm not needing to do a lot of post-production at all. Um, and I'm using a lot of light to capture the, the 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 coats and the fur um because i'm not working with skin tones i don't i don't need to worry about um whether i'm blowing out skin it's 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 i find it's different. it's not a concern yeah it's, it's not, not now concern, I'm, never, yeah. I'm never worried about that um and so um once i've got that exposure right uh, i don't need to change it much Jake's got another question, Aries. Yep. 
So I just checked, I checked out your website, love the images of the dogs with the pink and blue background. Do you have multiple backdrops or do you sometimes change the hue and post? Um, look, I do have multiple backdrops, uh, but uh, the images that you're referring to there, and nine times out that? of 10 when I'm working with color. One? That, that one, yeah, so they're, they're gels. Um, no, I don't adjust them in post. Um, I'm, I'm always trying to, to, to make them work um, in camera. Um, what I do in post um, most of the time doesn't require uh, a lot of changes. So uh, that, in this case, um, I've got my background light, and this will come back to what I was talking about before with Jim was, you know, having that really high powered light as my background, um, I'm able to I'm able to get color like that from a gel. Um, and I've got a box full of gels. Um, I do find that most of the time my clients um, are quite happy with a with a standard black or white background. Um, uh, the color is generally something I want to add. Uh, and it's not it's not normally something there's another one um, it's not normally something a client will request uh, depends on the job depends on the on the animal um, you'll see there's another there's a there's the cat with the orange eyes coming up um, yeah that one for me it was it, I really wanted to capture this with an orange background to accentuate the eyes so once again it's gels you can see you can actually see that it's the gel. The colour's bleeding. The, yeah. The colour bleed onto the coat. Um, yeah. And so my my key light, uh, that's when I will change the lighting setup. My key light really does, aside from providing that catch light that you can see, it really does. I boost that power up. So I'm getting that white light and um, there's not as much, or there's minimal bleed, if that makes sense. All right, let's look at the other. Do you want to share with us? Yes. With us yeah, a story Sarah, talk about it? that. Yeah. So this is a, um, so I'm a total bird nerd, as you can tell from Gary hanging out with oh, me. Oh, here's Gary uh, coming this up. Is, yeah, Wait, he's. Let, let me just put him on the. Is Gary in there? If you can move slightly towards your there we go. other side, oh, other side, other side. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Hey. Yeah, he's quite oh a character. He's a rescue. He's a rescue. He's a beautiful little guy. Um, he's yeah. really just starting to come into his own. I've done. A, I've had a, spent a lot of time working with him. Um, he's he's oh been God, he's cage gorgeous. raised. Yeah, he's very beautiful. He knows he's beautiful. He's very cheeky. Um, he's been cage raised. Uh, he's he's used to. He's been. He's he's going to give me a kiss. Um, he's used to uh, human contact to a point, um, but it always has to be on his terms. Um, I would, re if he could be released, he would be released, but he um, he wouldn't last long in the wild. So um, yeah. I don't like I don't like having birds in cages. So um, he comes and hangs out in the studio. There you go, Gary. Come around. That's it. Yeah, you can see yourself. Um, he he comes and hangs out with me in the studio and gets up to no good. Loves my dogs. Um, he's quite. He's quite gorgeous. Yeah, he's not a fan fun. of having his photo taken, so he's very rarely a test subject. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's curious. He's checking himself out in the almost like checking yeah, himself in, in in the monitor. Yeah, and that's why I get him down here with me. It's about yeah. like he, you know, birds. Birds need. Um, constant stimulation and engagement so he hangs out with yeah. me so uh daniel's asked a question what aperture you do you use to get a good depth of field um look daniel it's anywhere between f11 and f22 it's always at quite a um low or high aperture depending upon which way you um, refer to your aperture but uh in this case um with the photos of bowie i think they were all taken at f11 uh between f11 and f14 um uh this particular photo was captured in my studio it's of a uh, a baby tawny frogmouth um it's a sydney wildlife rescue um and it was uh was lifting its wings up in the in the studio and i 
I just love feathers and the detail. Um, I would have captured this at quite a high aperture. Um, the focus does drop off just a little bit on the edge of the feathers, which personally I don't mind. Um, and yeah, there's the the only Photoshop that's that's taken place here was um, I've removed removed the branch that's in the in the foreground foreground that it was standing on, and um, uh, there was just a, there was some holes in its feathers at the bottom, but um, the majority of this was was in camera. So I do I know the the question came up before. I do use Photoshop. Um, I do I do like um, playing with symmetry, um, but I don't always do that. So, yeah. Let's look at the next one, shall we? What else? Have we got? Oh, that's a. Uh, this is, it's a husky. This is or beautiful. Alaska, more more. Yeah, this is. Uh, this is a husky. Um, and this is this dog's name's Opal. Um, Opal's featured in my book. Um, and uh, I included this because I wanted to talk about a different lighting setup. So um, in this case, to capture this image, I've still got the beauty dish um, more functioning as a key light than when I'm working with a white background. Um, and I've got a black vinyl roll in the studio. Um, I don't have a background light and my side lights become rim lights. Um, and you'll see that's how I'm able to capture that um, the the rim lighting around Opal's nose um, yep. that really comes down oh, yeah, in yeah. underneath underneath his chin. So um, yeah, that was a portrait I captured I captured for the book, telling Opal's story. Hmm. Uh, but a beautiful husky. Um, He's. How about this one? Yeah, I've it's included like this one. Too. <laughs> This is um this is one I captured in in Rwanda, um, uh, a, a gorilla, and I worked. Uh, I I waited patiently. I wanted to talk about how patient I am when it comes to working with animals. Kids, not so much, but definitely animals. And uh, we were on. We were, we did a safari. We did the gorilla trek, and. Uh, I sat in front of this gorilla for uh, about 25 minutes and just let her be comfortable with me and and my camera and me being in her space. It was a really miserable day. There wasn't a lot of light. It was raining. It was gross. Um, she was hiding behind bamboo. And I had this split second. I remember before I went, I read that if um, that if, a gorilla feels comfortable with you that um, it could potentially pose for a photo. And so that's what I had in my mind when I captured this was I wanted to capture um, capture her posing for me. And I don't want I don't know what made me pick this gorilla. Uh, I just I just did and I just sat there for a while. So while everybody else was wandering around looking at at, at all the different gorillas, there was a family of about twenty. I just sat and um, made this one feel comfortable with me. And I had this second where she gave me this really cheeky, flirty smile, um, and I captured this. And this is this was with the 24 to 70, so you can actually see how close I was at the time. Um, and there's just oh something God. about that for me that you just... And it really was a split second. Um, she did do it a couple of times after I captured that image. She was very... Yeah, I think she was very happy with having her photo taken, but she was also quite shy. Um, so, yeah, for me, it's just about the patience and having an idea in my mind as to what I'm looking to capture. I have a general understanding of the animal. I guess it kind of requires instinct as well, right? Because to choose the right one, to sit there, and a bit luck. I find that so, when, yeah. when working with animals, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely able to, to read and feel whether you like them or not or whether you can be tr whether, whether I can be trusted. Um, and I do get that feedback from my clients all the time that I'm able to make an animal feel, feel quite comfortable um, quite quickly most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. Um, 
they can sense. They sense whether whether you're a threat or whether um, it's a it's it's a safe environment to be in. And I know certainly from from the the time I spent in Rwanda with the gorillas, um, you know, we had some very close encounters with some silverbacks, and um, that's not an animal that you want to have make uh, have have feel threatened. Um, and so, by understanding um, how how I can behave to make an animal feel more comfortable um, is just as important as um, doing thing, doing all sorts of different things. It's 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 understanding that my behaviour has an outcome. Ah, this is this was a beautiful dog called Mushroom. Um, uh, Jake's come back. Uh, I didn't even think about using gels, but thanks for the tips. No worries at all. Um, why do I use a beauty dish rather than a softbox? Um, good question. Don't have a particular answer for that. Um, I enjoy using a beauty dish. I do. Um, I do have an octobox as well, um, uh, a two foot octobox, but it's whatever you're comfortable using. Um, personally, I like it's whatever shape you like as a um, as a catch -a light in the eyes. What else have we got there, Aries? Let's have a look, shall we? It's a cat. Ah, uh, yes. Pablo how, the French how did you bulldog. Get, yeah, how did you get into a smile like that? Uh, I think Pablo, from, it was a while ago that I captured this photo. Pablo was um, just really engaged with me. I don't think... Peanut butter is a good way to get a smile or reaction, food, treats. Um, I think in this case, it was just Pablo being Pablo. This was his personality. Um, sometimes it's just as hard to get an animal to keep their mouth closed as it is to get them to open it and give you a smile. Um, comes back to patience again. It's pretty cute. I love those. I love those. Um, yeah. Oh, Eddie's 360. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, mate. We used 380, 600 and 280, 400. We didn't use any Eddie 360 in this case. Correct. What is that? It's <laughs> like, I've been talking for years. I've never had another, a such a... Another, another French bulldog. And look, it's it's... It's just a very unusual photo. And um, I remember when I was taking photos of, this is a dog called Chapo. Um, when I was taking photos of Chapo, his tongue was just massive. And so I changed the, I changed the background, changed the gel to match the color of his tongue. Um, and it was just, it's such a, sorry, um, it's such a, it's such an unusual tongue. You can actually see, I have used peanut butter to capture this. You can see the peanut butter, Gary. Um, <laughs> he's playing with my headphones. Um, he's being cheeky now. Uh, yeah. There's just something funny about that. It just makes me smile every time I look at it. Yeah. And that's always what I'm looking to capture is, is something that generally makes people smile. Um, this is a swamp wall wallaby. Um, this is uh, Coco, the swamp wallaby. It was in care with Sydney Wildlife Rescue last year. Um, and Coco was, was engaged with me. Um, from recollection here, I had some, some really nice gum leaves. And uh, I got this, this really cool, cheeky pose. Swamp wallabies are very confident. Um, was not phased by the lights, me, studio space. Same goes with the wombats I've worked with. Not phased. Not phased by it at all. I'm just going to put Gary in timeout because Gary's being cheeky. Hey, come on. <laughs> do you reckon, um, do, you, do you actually change the light parameters for different animals or they or they kind of stay pretty much the same? Uh, I do change them. I do. I do move it, or I do change them slightly, but uh, not always. I mean, look, we we spoke about this yesterday, Aries. Um, 
while what I've worked with here was a five light setup, I didn't start out with a five light setup. Um, I've added lights to to my space um, so that I can work quicker and easier. Um, I did start out with a much simpler setup, a three light setup. Um, and it just meant that it required a little bit more post production. It required um, it required animals to be in in that sweet spot more often for me to be able to get the photos I was looking for. Um, so by by adding those extra lights, I'm able to um, just work quicker, easier. Um, when I'm working with animals, you do find, and uh, I, I know that this question, I think Shani asked this question earlier, was that, you know, sometimes you don't, I don't have many opportunities to take a photo. And if you wouldn't mind, Aries, if you could bring up the photo of the echidna. Um, Which This one? is an example. The echidna. Is the echidna in, in that collection that I gave you? With which background? Let me just quickly. White. A spiky oh, animal. Yes, there it is. Top right hand corner. No, that's a chicken. That's the echidna. So I think, yeah, go back. That's the echidna. Um, so when capturing this, there's actually um, uh, a lot of people have thought that I've made this symmetrical. I haven't. Um, uh, the only thing I've done from a Photoshop perspective here is um is just on the shadow and just to remove some of the gloss off its off its nose and snout um here it i was looking to capture this photo i knew exactly what i wanted and i wanted to see its eyes um but i didn't i couldn't shine the light directly in its eyes um because that would have scared it so um in total um in this short photography session, I took five, six photos. Uh, I didn't take many photos at all. So it was all about patience, timing. Uh, I understood exactly what I wanted. I reflected the light into its eyes off the off the um, off the site, off the floor, um, so that I wasn't I wasn't putting a light in its eyes directly. And then it's mostly room light, so. Um, yeah, this is an example where I, I knew exactly the type of photo I wanted to capture um, and I just had to be patient. You'll see that its little feet, one of its feet is poking out underneath. You don't often see echidnas like that um, and they're just such beautiful animals. Um, yeah, that's that's one of my favourite photos. I don't often li I like my work um, or I'm not um, always totally happy with my work i think it's uh one of the disadvantages of being a perfectionist but uh this is this is one photo that um i really do love it it just um yeah. I, I love the natural i love the natural symmetry um and the more you the more you look at it the more you can see that it's actually not symmetrical at all uh but there's just something about those eyes in that echidna. that makes you makes you stay in the photo to you know searching around for a long time right it's symmetry oh no it's not it's not exact symmetry yeah, yeah no. and it's, it's no mm. it's 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 natural it's natural symmetry um but not symmetrical in any way shape or form it's like our faces Aries. you know no no yeah, human exactly. face and no animal's face is symmetrical yet um at first glance um you you would think we are uh yeah there's just something about that that uh and this was um i did try and capture a photo like that with another echidna um and it was too nervous so we didn't we didn't take any photos of it um this is a this is an example yeah um so this is a kangaroo by the name of delta I captured this a couple of years ago and uh, included this for you because um there's there's something about it and i remember i remember how i was able to capture this and it was just a case of of seeing seeing this unfold before me and having a split second to capture it and there's been there there's actually no photoshop to this um uh really there's there's just a bit of cleaning up of the foreground 
um, with the kangaroo hair, but this was captured in my studio. Uh, Delta was a, a kangaroo that was in care with Sydney Wildlife Rescue. Um, uh, her mother was hit by a car. So for me, um, uh, this, this, uh, people see different things in this photo. For me, it's about, um, uh, she was in her mother's pouch when she died. And um, for me, there's, a, there's this introspective walk inside a pouch as she's cleaning it. But there's this feeling that I get from this um, that I just, I just love that, that little ball that she's crawled herself up into um, while she's happily cleaning away. And um, she had a great time in the studio. Um, I do find that with some wildlife is that they're not, um, we will never, we will never do anything that, that harms them, hurts them. Um, it's always about making sure they're comfortable before we, we take any photos. And it's quite amazing how many times, uh, they are comfortable with me and my space. Um, yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's Magic. one of my favorite photos too. Yeah. That, that yeah. was pretty cool. You just don't often see that. No, you don't. Uh, chickens. Chickens. My favourite animal to work with, I have to say. Um, I just love... Uh, well, I'm, I'm obviously a bird nerd, um, so there's that. Uh, they're so much fun, Aries. You just... 99.9% .9 of the time, they don't care about the lights, the camera, the studio. They <laughs> And they start performing. Um and they'll, they'll, I'll find that they're very comfortable very quickly and they'll start playing up for me in the camera and they'll start strutting around and they'll start dancing and, and doing silly things. And so I've got quite a collection of um, chickens dancing. Uh, well, that's what it looks like to me anyway. Um, yeah, they're just, they're, they've got so much personality, the chickens. Oh my gosh! Yeah, this is a so this is a death adder. It's a different death adder to the one I showed before, um, and this was it was quite quite close at this time. This 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 snake was um, was very very comfortable with me and my space, um, and because I could see from its behaviour that it was really comfortable with me, um, I felt comfortable. So uh, wasn't the first venomous snake I worked with. Um, mm -hmm. But I have to say, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with its beauty, um, which is quite, for me, it's quite an amazing thing to go from being absolutely petrified of snakes to to being fe to feeling so comfortable in their presence and um, not feeling threatened by them at all. Um, from recollection, I think this was actually captured with a macro. Um, mm. Uh, I did have, I did have a, um, when I work with snakes and when I work with wildlife, I always have um, a carer working with me um, because when I've got, when I'm behind the camera, um, it's much harder for me to read behaviour. So I'm always making sure that I've got someone there who is able to read the animal's behaviour and, um, and let me know if um, I need to you need take to a step back in this yeah. case, um, or just if, if, you know, they're bothered at all. Um, I have to say, I never, because of the way I work, because I'm so patient, I never, I've never had any issues at all. I'm always able to tell when it's appropriate to take a photo or when it's not. Um, and yeah, this was this, this you know, highly venomous snake, but I just see, I see a lot of beauty in it personally. Um, and that's what that's when we're taking photos for Sydney Wildlife Rescue. It is about showcasing their beauty and and using the photos to educate people about them um, and their personalities and and what they and what they do. So uh, I can see I've got a photo here from Andrew. Which animals would you love the ha opportunity to photograph? Uh, to be honest, it's all of them. I love working with all animals. Um, there's I love birds. Uh, always have. Um, I is there animals on my wish list? I guess is probably more what I read into this question. Uh, the answer is no, and the reason why the answer is no is because because a lot of what I do um, from a wildlife perspective is uh, of animals in in care. Um, 
I never want to see an animal injured or um, orphaned. So I don't ever want to put an animal on my wish list for that reason, um, because generally it means it's um, it's been injured or hurt or it's been through something. So um, that's why I don't have a wish list. Um, I and, and that's what I love about my job. I never I never really know. Um, what i'm going to be working with any given any given week uh a week can change so during COVID, um uh the studio was closed i closed quite early on in sydney um in mid-march and um i reopened really slowly my studio space is quite small um but i did have i did have some wildlife come in uh a couple of times and i had people i trusted during that time so um, was able to work with, uh, from recollection, I had a few snakes and some lizards and a lace monitor and uh, a peacock. Um, so uh, I, had a, I had a few things that came in that, that kept me uh, mentally sane um, because I was still able to take some photos and work with and meet some cool animals. I hope that's answered right. the question. Oh, sure. Sure, that would do it. That's all difficult to answer the question. Do you want to have a look at this one? Yeah, so this question, how do you go about photographing an animal with a black background, such as a snake or husky, while um, avoiding light spill on the backdrop? Uh, look, I do get light spill, um, so I don't try and avoid it too much. That's when post does kick in. Um, it's pretty, I find if I've, if I've got the animal well, the animal well lit, um, the post work here is, is generally just making a black ground, a black background blacker, um, mm -hmm. or a white background whiter. Um, yeah. I'm never, I'm never deep etching them, um, and, and taking them off the background and putting them onto something different. Um, but in this case, yeah, there, there's spill, um, but I find it's uh, a couple of minutes in Photoshop and I'm able to, to, to dodge or burn uh, that background accordingly. I hope that's answered your question, Jake. Oh, uh, Here's a commercial. See, here's a commercial shoot I did for a, for a really cool pet brand. Um, so for me, I'm all about, I'm all about healthy... Um, uh, healthy, uh, a healthy pet lifestyle, and uh, Lyca is a brand that I actually feed my dogs, and um, I had the opportunity to to work with them on a rebranding campaign. And what I wanted to showcase here, and why I included it, is is that um, when I'm doing commercial work, depending upon what a client wants as an outcome, um, I will work with professional animal talent. Um, I do work with people's pets um, at a commercial level, but sometimes um, when you're after, when a client's after an outcome, um, it's much easier to work with talent. And in this case, Harvey um, uh, came from a talent, an animal talent agency, and so we were e easily able to to ask him um, to do different things. Um, and so this is this is captured captured in camera. Um, and yeah, if you jump, if people jump on my website, you'll see that there's a campaign I did for Virgin. So that's Harvey again. We were able to, we were able to get Harvey because he was really well trained as talent. We were able to get him to put a carrot in his mouth and and not eat it. Um, uh, oh, so good. Certainly, if if I gave a carrot to one of my dogs, uh, it would last all of three seconds. Um, they would they would be eating it. I'd never be able to get that 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 shot. So. Mm. This is an example of, of um, having an understanding as to what the client wants, needs, and um, and briefing them appropriately on, look, you're not going to be able to, the chances of being able to get that type of photo um, with someone's pet um, is, is slim to none. All right. So if there's no further question, uh, Peter, um, I would love to... Thank you for your time and Thank your you. sharing. Thank um, you. My pleasure. We see so many good photos. And um, uh, so before I call the 
for the end of the day, for the most of photo photographers who's, you know, just photographing their um, pet at their house rather than doing treating this as a full-time profession, do you have a simpler light setup you can advise in? Yeah, I'd say it's a, it's a two light setup, really. Um, okay. well, it can be a single light setup, uh, that, that uh, on-camera flash with the right background. Um, you know, you know, I'm 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 working in a studio, and I've got a very yep. specific um, look that I'm going for, and and it's a it's a look that that, that I use. Distinguish yourself from the others. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, look, I I don't I don't follow many photographers, so I'm not. Um, I really do try and avoid looking at what other people do, um, mm -hmm. because I have I have my own ideas in my head. Um, I do I do look at other photographers, but I don't look to um, to try and copy what other people are doing. I'm always looking to um, to do my own thing while also it's appropriate to get inspiration. But uh, this is a look that, that, that I'm going for um, and my work does does cross into... I, I do have a lot, uh, quite a few fine art projects. Um, I've got a couple other books that I'm working on um, and some other projects that I have in mind and uh, I'll, I'll probably do my first first solo exhibition. It was going to be this year, um, yeah. but COVID COVID put an end to that. And there's a few other exciting things that I'm working. Do you want to share? So, yeah. Um, do you want to share your website so in the future, if you know people can follow your work? Yeah. So my yeah, studio yeah. is Tame and Wild Studio. Thanks, Aries. Um, I'm glad someone's someone's helping me plug my business. Uh, my studio yeah. website's tameandwildstudio.com and um my personal website which just had a revamp um is petersharpphotography.com um i it's now i i just revamped my website it hadn't had any love in quite some time um yeah i've just been too busy so uh just pulled off all my portrait music work and all i've got up there now is is what i do which is which is animals um and you know the subject of the, my talk was Talking, what was it? It was talking about doing a job you love, and um, that's what I do. I love, I love what I do, and so I hope I've been able to get that across in in talking about you know, how I've captured these photos and and what I'm looking for, and the variety of different animals that I get to work with. You know, I I get to wake up every day and and do something different, um, and while still specialising in a very in a very niche space, so. And I think that's I think that's hard to hard to do as a photographer, um, taking taking that risk, Aries, you know, to to step out of what kick the jump of what I was doing, which was a variety of things. For a long time, I had mm -hmm. this studio, um, and I wasn't working in here full time. I was doing event work and music work and portrait work and all types of different work, and I was doing jobs that that weren't fulfilling me and weren't I wasn't getting a lot out of them. Um, uh you know you know me well aries i've got a yeah, i've got a back we'll condition that prevents uh, yeah. prevents me from being able to work a lot so um the idea of of having to do jobs for money that i wasn't enjoying just wasn't working for me um which is why i made that i made that switch and 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 took that that jump into into choosing to just focus on what i love doing but uh, back right, to your cool. question, I didn't actually answer your question, Aries, did I? You did. Uh, the you light did. light setup. I did light it. I did answer it. Light setup. You could do it with a couple of lights. It's what I started yeah. with. Um, I've just as as my Let's business has gotten bigger lights. and growing. Um, if you only had two lights, you can you can do that. You know, I would I would use uh, I would just change the power settings, and I'll have. Um, uh, a, a main light. Um, number of images that I captured in my book, Aries, um, were captured with just one light in people's homes. Oh. So um, I don't. I, while, while, while that's what I used in studio um, on location, um, I don't. I don't use um, a lot of lights at all. Um, the gorilla was obviously captured with no light. Uh, it was all natural light. So um, it's just having an understanding around. Um, how that use light works and yeah you use what you've got yep. change the camera settings we're, we're privileged mate we've got we've got yeah. access to amazing technology these days yeah cool all right so, thank you
if there's no further questions, thank you, Peter, for your time. And everybody, well I hope you had a good evening and with us. And uh, stay safe. I'll see you guys until next week. Bye. Bye.